you've proven to be able to back yourself and take action and that mm. has led to the outcomes that you now have but i remember i remember where i was going with this before i just started grooming your ego yeah i liked politely. it politely i did like it i'm glad there's a table here so yeah me too <laughs> <laughs> we've discussed essentially the point you are now you are content with i think yeah. it's fair to say yeah 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 but the, the journey you've been on to get here has been one of ups and downs and lessons learned in terms of how you interact with your metrics for success, mm -hmm. your own mental health, your perception on training, how you manage your day to day and what's actually yeah. important to you. Yeah. So do you want to just give us a rundown of the past year of what journey you've been on there? Because I think it's yeah. one that people find very relatable. Yeah. So uh, and to go back to your point about it being like unique, my account, I feel like it's because I don't follow the traditional influencer trajectory or the patterns that you see influencers do where they feel like they need to post once a day or a minimum of nine stories a day or do you know what I mean? Like I, I feel like yeah, it's, from it's, the it's, beginning, it's the, the e-book e guidelines. Yeah. You, you must do X, Y, yeah, and Z. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I, from the beginning, I was like, I, it was never the intention of being an influencer it was always content first for me um, because you enjoy it because i love it yeah. i bloody love it i love making videos like nothing brings me more joy than like filming a video with someone and i'm so excited to get home and just sit and edit on my phone and just like i love like put like i go alexa play chill s soft music or whatever and it just plays like lo-fi music and i'm there like editing away and like giggling while i'm editing and re replaying things and I love the storytelling nature of it because that's what I I did for two years for 40 hours a week. Um, so at the very beginning of making content was in lockdown. I was still working for WIP, still doing customer service. But around that, I had a lot more free time. And then when I went back to Devon for the second lockdown was when it kind of really like elevated because I was living with my brother, my mum, and my stepdad. And I have I've got a big house like in the middle of Devon. Um, I had a lot of space to film silly sketches. I've got my mum's clothes <laughs> I could wear. Of course. I've got a bald stepdad. I've got my brother who likes making videos and likes filming videos. So I was like, this is the perfect studio setup, really. Um, so I just started making gym sketches. And again, it wasn't that I was making two minute 30 IGTV videos. So they weren't like the best form of uh, engaging content because people would argue oh maybe you should just do 90 second reels because of the engagement the, like the attention span oh, of the I, audience igtv stuff should go on youtube not on instagram exactly yeah, people were telling things. me oh, why don't you put your phone horizontally and put it on youtube instead of ig and i was always just like no nah, I, I i'll just keep doing it I, I, it's, not, it's just for fun at the end of the day i like making a fool of me and my brother um so me and my brother just started making videos together he would just like was wonderfully helpful in not coming up with ideas but he was just he didn't understand most of it because he doesn't train so he was just like i was just like just look there and look like imagine someone just like flailing on a barbell and he was just like just following my direction um perfectly he was always so good yeah the uh, big big shout out he's how yeah he's harry you're a legend perfect execution he's so perfect good execution. so so good um and doesn't realize how talented he is he's very very funny his comedic timing is perfect um, but doesn't give himself enough credit. So Harry, give yourself credit and keep training. All right, brother. Um, but anyway, I started making sketches with him. The reaction was way bigger than I thought it possibly could be. Because again, like I said to you in the car on the way here, I went from doing carousels of me doing like skipping and cleans in my garden with like the occasional pug walking by um, to then of a, a, a carefully edited two minute 30 short film. And people like there was no teaser. I wasn't like telling people I was going to do it. Um, and again, this goes back to backing yourself. I get a lot of people that DM me, especially in the fitness space. They go like, oh, how do you do it? How do you come up with ideas? Like, I just I, I can't quite get the like level of engagement. Or, but the difficulty is, is in the fitness space, in the PT world, it's very much an aesthetic space. And you're trying to convey you're trying to convey essentially a message that can be translated to a product ultimately, mm. whereas you're essentially tr creating the content for the sake of the content, not, not, yeah, for, not exactly. for the sake of a funnel. Exactly, yeah. They're doing, yeah, exactly that. They're going, here's a funny video, free trial. Whereas I'm going, here's a funny video, that's it. And people go, oh. Thank you, come again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> double tap. That was yeah, a, yeah. That, thank you for that. Like, I'm just, I just want to add... A value to someone's timeline without it having like 
a hidden message or motive. But a lot of these PTs as well, they care too much about how they look. And again, a lot of them think I'm a PT. So they don't understand that I spent two years improvising orgies, pretending to be a fainting pygmy goat and snogging strangers for 40 hours a week for two years. Like that's, it does something to people. Like I have zero inhibitions and I'm happy to look like a fool. And I feel like some PTs aren't happy to do that, but they could, like there are videos I see that like the concept is genius. The writing is very funny, but the person, that's featured in the video cares too much how they look. And if they just drop that guard and own the jokes, people will be like, wow, you're a cover model and you're funny. Like, like how are you do like- There how aren't do many do of those. There aren't, no, no. but um, because they don't, they, they, they care too much about how they Sound, look. That sounds harsh to cover models. <laughs> yeah, they're all <aren't>, <laughs> <little> boring. <laughs> <laughs> just, to be fair, just to, just just to flag that, but no, they're like if 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 you were on the cover of Men's Health because you are pretty jacked, I think it's fair to say, <laughs> and quite funny. I think we've established that. Thank then you, then I think it would be, it would be a different offering, which is mm. a great thing because I think it shows the diversity of the fitness industry and the fact that you don't very much fit into it, which means that people immediately assume, oh, he's a PT that's funny, yeah, they always rather do. than oh, he's a comedian that is also really fit and trained. Yeah, I love training. I just love training alongside. But I think there's a managing expectations consideration here because people that might come to your account for the first time will just see Sam Cornforth being hilarious and very good at executing these videos, mm. not realizing there is a significant amount of delayed gratification that's gone into a that. Lot, yeah. And that's that's honing your trade. That's that's mm. doing the reps. Yeah, exactly. Quite literally. And it's not to say that you've done a terrible job of telling people how well trained <laughs> as an actor you are, yeah. Sam. You swine. You're being disingenuous. <laughs> But it's more the fact that pe people always look at the end goal of the person yeah. and think, how can I get there tomorrow mm -hmm. rather than the entire process and commitment that's gone the whole way through? Because, I mean, you were method acting as a star when you were younger. Uh, yeah. I was not method acting as a star no. when I was younger. I was actively avoiding it and rinsing my mates for doing so. Yeah, exactly. And I feel foolish for doing that. I want to make yeah. that crystal clear. <laughs> and now for me to then assume right how can i be like sam how can i make videos like sam in the next couple of weeks it's thousands is, of hours is, discre of life, yeah. is discrediting all the yeah, work that you've done and that's not a criticism, a criticism to people but it's just another reinforcement that mm. that beneath the surface with everybody online is an awful lot mm. cover models good example yeah they're not just on the cover because they just look like that and they came out of the womb like that there's yeah, lots true. of work that goes on behind the scenes yeah and i think that should be reassuring for people that do if they do watch my content and I'm flattered if they do and they go like I want to do that to know that I it's not innate I wasn't born like to be able to do this like I did learn how to do it I it during like I've been making YouTube videos for 10 years like I before um I went to drama school before I auditioned for this Sherlock role for the chorus role I got Sherlock because I'm a bloody legend um I was editing on Sony Vegas Pro that I, torrent, I torrented just illegally. Is there a video of you somewhere giving yourself a pledge 10 years down the line or something I've seen? No, yeah, so I, I, I thanked my uh, first 100 subscribers on YouTube or something like that like a decade ago. So me and my brother shared a bedroom, both single beds, either side of the room, had an Xbox in the middle of the room that we used to just play to death. But during the evenings, we'd lip sync together. This is like 10 years ago on YouTube. We'd, and I would edit them on Sony Vegas Pro, on YouTube tutorials, Sony Vegas Pro. And I did a video where I shot myself in the head. I had a blood splatter on the wall. And I, I didn't, I wasn't like to go viral or anything. I just wanted to, to try new things and learn things. And I was excited by sound design and building soundscapes for the videos and stuff. And I taught myself Sony Vegas Pro, went to drama school for thousands of hours and then found training. And now it's just, I'm merging all those worlds into one to hopefully build a sustainable career and making people laugh.